The gameplay of tennis is one of the oldest concepts in all of video game history. While the definition of video game does have a lot of room for interpretation, it is largely agreed that the first video game was Tennis for Two, created by physicist William Higginbotham. Featuring no sprites of any kind, but rather just a ball and a net, this incredibly rudimentary game was a pretty good adaptation of tennis to electronics, considering its creation in 1958. The first commercially successful video game, 1972's Pong, followed a similar set of rules. At its core, Pong is, again, a basic form of tennis, albeit on a smaller scale. This title set the baseline for all video games that followed it throughout the 1970s, and while there was a lot of genre diversification in the following years, just about every company producing video game consoles had some sort of take on the tennis genre. Each new year a Pong clone was released, a new feature was added. Tennis on the Intellivision added better controls for sprites, while Tennis on the Atari VCS did a good job of increasing the speed of gameplay. When Nintendo was choosing games to turn into at-home titles for its new system in 1985, Tennis was a no-brainer. Technically, America had actually seen the release of Tennis in 1984 on the Nintendo Versus system, an arcade cabinet featuring interchangeable ROM chips, utilizing the same technology as the Famicom, or NES, carts. It was a great example of a single-player or collaborative game that anybody with any amount of video game experience could understand. Nintendo's take on Pong added a multitude of new features. Its vertical perspective is significantly more detailed than previous titles, with the ball shrinking and growing depending on its location in the court. Similar to baseball, the sprites are cartoony, vastly improving upon the more realistic but worse-looking wireframe renderings of previous titles. Mario appears as the official, tracking the ball back and forth across the court and providing judgment on its positioning should a player miss a swing or hit it too far. Speaking of missing a swing, let me speak a bit about playing these black box games on modern televisions. I do not own a CRT. I played all of these titles on my regular TV, a flat screen from the mid-2000s. I'll go into detail about the importance of the CRT in the Robin Lightgun games, but essentially, the main difference between the two televisions is that the CRT has virtually no lag between button press and action. The NES was intended to be played on a TV that was out in the mid-1980s, so with games that require specific timing on button presses, such as tennis, which forces the player to press A in accordance to the ball's positioning on the court, it becomes almost impossible to properly anticipate and correctly return a serve from the CPU opponent. From the perspective of someone playing this on the wrong hardware, it is somewhat frustrating. With that aside, now let's get back to the main gameplay of tennis. There is multiplayer, but because of the perspective, both players play against two CPUs, limiting the competitive aspect of the game. There are many other NES sports titles that allow for 1v1 brawling. Baseball, soccer, golf, 10-yard fight, and more. Nonetheless, just about every other tennis title that had released previously had seen some sort of versus mode, and Nintendo's lacking one was a bit sad on their very first home console. The trend of later tennis titles improving upon their earlier iterations continued, but after tennis's initial release, there wasn't much innovation. When the NES was opened up to third-party developers, there were quite a few titles produced for the sport, but none really nailed the graphics or physics of the original. Top Player's Tennis, Deluxe Tennis 2, and Jimmy Connors Tennis were all put out on the NES, to name a few. Nintendo ported their original game to the Game Boy in 1989, but it was decidedly worse than the NES version due to the technical limitations of the Game Boy. It wasn't until Super Tennis on the SNES, also published by Nintendo, that the formula saw another massive leap forward. In later years, Nintendo would take heavy inspiration from themselves and revamp the whole tennis genre with a Mario twist, releasing Mario Tennis in 2000, a game that added a variety of improvements in the form of new controls, great depth of gameplay, and a colorful cast. I'm skipping over Mario Tennis on the Virtual Boy though. Please don't bring that up. Once again, in 2006, with the release of Wii Sports, Nintendo would put a fresh coat of paint on the tennis genre. Utilizing motion controls and the most user-friendly experience at the time, tennis was a favorite of many, and unlike its 1985 twin, it allowed for a beautifully executed two-player versus mode. While Tennis for NES was meant to be a simple release that many would enjoy, the Wii version also aimed to bring non-gamers into their audience once again. 
With rules as basic as Pong, it proved to be a simple game that anyone of any age would be able to understand. The Wii Sports version is very similar to Super Tennis, the game that arguably set the standard for all tennis games moving forward. But the lack of button controls in the Wii title made it accessible to those who may not have had great coordination. It would also be the last tennis game Nintendo would publish for quite some time, until the release of Mario Tennis Open for the 3DS in 2012. From then on, it's been a pretty downhill battle for the sport, at least in Nintendo published titles. While the company tried to capitalize on the Marioification that brought new vitality to their other sports-themed titles, the formula has become quite bland. Mario Tennis Ultra Smash for the Wii U is one such game that was notoriously subject to very poor reviews. A small improvement was made for Mario Tennis Aces on the Switch, but unfortunately, the charm of the earlier Mario Tennis titles seems to have worn off. Regardless, in 1985, Nintendo did deliver a well-functioning, popular version of a simple game. While it may not have stood the test of time when compared to other releases, it certainly has its place as an important part of the genre at large. And for that, it deserves much love. Get it? Like, love? In tennis? Okay, I'm sorry. I'll move on.